so Especially I was kind of in academia there's kind of like a limited amount of facial expressions yeah it's true you're listening to the cosmic cast hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the cosmic cast stepping in for ricky today is me dr rick viva here uh we also have the notably forgettable tom harvey yep that's me uh, how low can she go? Not as low as that joke. Oh, no. Marissa Lowe. Hello. And what's that coming over the hill? Is it Dr. John Pernet Fisher? No, he sat right here. Dr. John Pernet Fisher. Hello. <laughs> and uh, we have an exciting episode for you all today. Uh, obviously, we've been away for a little bit, so we'll catch you up on the many conferences that the group have been to, what I have been up to, and any holiday activities we've also been up to. So it's good to have you all back. Uh, how are you guys doing? Pretty good. Yeah. It's been a busy January so far, yes. but um, mm. yeah. You, you've been to two conferences. I have been to two conferences already, yeah. The other two jokers in the room. Just been uh, to the one. You've been to the yeah, one. Just yeah. the one. So collectively four conferences yeah. <laughs> have been yeah, attended. You, add, you accumulate yeah. them together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, there was also the LPSC abstract deadline. So, so January turns mm. out to be quite a busy month mm. um, for planetary scientists and geochemists in general, I guess. Because we've got, yeah, LPSC deadline is always early January, mm-hmm. which means you've got to be working that over the Christmas holidays. VMSG is always really early January as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and then this BPSC, which is the British Planetary, Planetary Science. Science Conference, whereas mm-hmm. VMSG is the... Uh, Volcanic and Magmatic Studies Group meeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So these are two big conferences that happen, one for planetary scientists and one is more on the terrestrial spectrum, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Did VMSG start as an early careers meeting? Or am I making that up? Um, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Um, in its current state, there's probably about 100 and something to 200 attendees. Mm-hmm. Um, Where is it, it was, based? Uh, it was down in Plymouth this okay. year. Yeah. Um, which it's somewhere was, different every year, isn't it? Yeah, so 2019, it was in St. Andrews. Um, this year, it was in Plymouth. And then in 2021, it's actually going to be here in Manchester, mm-hmm. which is very good. Do you get many internationals or is it just mostly... British it's mostly UK yeah. Yeah. universities. Yeah. I, went to, I went to it on my... F- first year of my phd when i was in cambridge and many years ago because like you used to do terrestrial yeah in like yeah. 2000 and yeah. i don't know eight or nine or something and it was i think predominantly they encouraged mostly like phd students and postdocs to present rather mm. than having all the older professors speaking and stuff um i think, I think it was but it's grown a lot since then though i think mm. Yeah, well, then so. it was just you, wasn't it? It was John? just me in a room in Cambridge. Yeah, just yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, and and the you lights encouraged off. yourself. Really to good present. of them to host you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, they didn't know he was there. Um, um, so yeah, towards the end of the conference, they did actually say, "Oh, here was our balance of um, early career slash PhD mm-hmm. speakers mm-hmm. compared to say academic speakers," um, and it was a roughly fifty-fifty split. Okay, that's, um, yeah. for posters and, you, and talks. You did a talk there. Or? I did do a talk. Yeah. Was that was that your first conference talk? Actually? Yeah, yeah. So I'd done one at, uh, I've done some internal talks for, yeah. say, the research group mm-hmm. and then for the department, um, but not one at a yeah. proper conference before. How did you feel about that? Were you nervous? Um, I was definitely, I was feeling nervous because I'd properly relaxed after Christmas. Like I hadn't, mm-hmm. I'd worked like one mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. Um, sort of between Christmas and New Year's, but I wasn't in science mode. Um, but luckily my talk was actually the very last talk of the conference. So it was two so the, days. You were the headline act, if anything. You were. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I was the grand finale. Um, yeah. It was a two and a half day conference and I was that final talk there. So um, it was definitely a lot of anticipation that built up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd had a chance to practice my talk, but there was still part of me that was, yeah. It, it's strange because it was a very friendly audience there. I knew quite a lot of people in the audience mm-hmm. already. Um, Do you other find pe- it better when you know people or when you don't know people in the audience? Oh, I would rather speak for like a thousand strangers yes, yeah, exactly um, so. than yeah. speak to like one person who I know. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I, I'm, I'm always Speak of- to one person. That you know. <laughs> right now you are really struggling with the four of us in the room with you. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I'd rather give a talk in front of an audience of strangers yes, rather yeah. than people who I know. Yeah. Um, so what was your talk about? Uh, So it was sort of the preliminary work for my PhD so far. So um, the first stage has been looking at adapting a terrestrial magma ascent model for the moon um, and sort of comparing that with what experimental results have said so far. Um, So yeah, I think it went well. It was a 15 minute talk slot. Time went well. Um, I answered the question. How were the questions? Were they good questions? Um, It was mostly just, I think, with modelling... Um, it's hard to convey all the bits and pieces and all the numbers that have mm, gone into yeah. it. So someone was asking, how have you tested the sensitivity of the model? Yeah. So that was an all right question to ask. Yeah. So just for the listeners out there, 
there's this delicate balance when you're doing a presentation of how many questions you want and what you really want them to be about. So when you do a talk, as Marissa said, you normally get about 15 minutes. And it's a broad audience as well. It's people who are not necessarily very intimate with your particular subject area. So striking that balance of detail Mm. and accessibility for people who are not volcanologists, Mm. say, it can be challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like one of the main things is not using nomenclature because a lot of yeah. them jargon and all won't that. know what it yeah. means. Nobody likes jargon. But yeah. Um, so yeah. So but when you've done a talk, you want there definitely to be questions, mm-hmm. but you don't want them to be questions that are almost debunking what you've said. Obviously. Yeah. So for yeah. me, that's the scary part of doing yeah. talks is that the questions because you never know someone might stand up and give you a right curveball yeah, and you've yeah. no idea to answer it. Yeah. And I find that actually it can be quite confrontational sometimes mm-hmm. as well because you get a lot of people, particularly in the bigger conferences like LPSC and Goldschmidt, so the bigger ones, you get, you know, a lot of senior academics will stand up sometimes and they will have robust questions and, mm-hmm. and points for you, but really they're attacking, you know, your 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 supervisor via you. Yes, and, you know, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, people yeah. can be real, really quite difficult, yeah. Um, yeah, which but is not the... necessarily very nice yeah. for... Yeah, but as you were saying, John, it is a very like mixed audience. Yeah, so that but that's good. Main... That, that, re- that helps. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. the main thing for me. Actually, making sure I introduce the topic well enough, um, so people actually understand it. Um, especially for VMSG, um, there was one planetary volcanism poster, but then all of the talks were terrestrial volcanism, um, and obviously the principles apply from Earth to the Moon. Yes. But people weren't really familiar mm. with what lunar volcanism was like. Yeah, yeah, that's a difficulty. And also, although you just say that, and it's obviously true that they're they're exactly the same, it's just on a different body. Yeah, I think sometimes people forget that that it just would work the same. Obviously, the gravity can have effect, but other than that, yeah, yeah, because um, it's a two day meeting, isn't it? What ses- what session were you in? It's divided into different like subtopics isn't it I guess yeah so there was um, a big geochemistry session uh, looking at sort of uh, volcano monitoring um, and hazards um, and then I was in the deep interior processes Mm -hmm. session Um, yeah were there any particular highlights from the conference in addition to obviously smashing the talk Uh, Elliot what was the highlight of VMSG (laughs) Zoltan's playlist on the way down (laughs) So for all the listeners out there, if you you don't know what you're hearing now, uh, that's our sound tech guy, Elliot Carter. So if you hear a squeaking noise in your ear there, that's that's what that was, just to let you all know. So it was really nice to see other members of the group talking. So um, Kat Taya, who we've had on before, Mm -hmm. talking about tropomy sulfur sulfur dioxide measurements. She gave a talk, uh, as well as Ben Essie. Um, and then Elliot uh, gave a talk as well, um, as well as Emma Waters. So I suppose we can yeah, link to a all that. Good showing from Manchester then. Mm. Yeah, it was very good. Um, but then it was also good to to find out what other people were doing who I'd not met before. So um, a few episodes back, I talked about the bubble work I was doing in Durham mm-hmm. um, as an analog for how degassing might occur from a volcano. Um, turns out there's someone at Lancaster who was also looking at how um bubbles behave when they're on their own or if they're in clusters of bubbles um so that was good to sort mm. of because you don't normally yeah you don't normally talk about that when you're networking with people all the time so it was good to see mm. some talks from people who I didn't know before how do you find the networking element to all of this i really like networking um do you find it easy to come up to random people and go how's it going yeah i quite like it um yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't advise that technique. <laughs> I would normally stick to people who are attending the conference. <laughs> right. Okay. See, yeah, I, I saw something pretty funny recently, which was the Inigo Montoya approach to introducing yourself at conferences. What's that? So have you, have you seen The Princess Bride? No. There's a character in The Princess yeah. Bride who's famous for having this line, which is, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. And it's like, you state your name, you state the personal connection, and you state the reason that you want to talk to them. Oh, that's quite a clever idea. That is actually yeah. genuinely uh, yeah, yeah, that is yeah. quite good advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I employed that a few times. Right, at, so at what was your opening line then? My name's Tom Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> Talk- <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is a nice unthreatening way to introduce yourself yeah, to right. someone who you're hoping yeah. to get information from. Yeah. And was it successful? Yeah, no, it was good. It was good. Very good. Yeah, good thing with that technique. If you haven't got your own answers to put in, just use the ones from the film. It's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. Yeah, I think I just, I just start chatting rubbish to people. <laughs> so, for example, do you have any examples from BPSC? Then? Um I just start, I don't know, just start talking at people, really. I think yeah. the easiest thing to do is to kind of float up next to people at, at their poster or um, 
especially if they've just given a talk or something mm-hmm. and start with a, a bit talk. of a chat about you know the talk or mm-hmm. the, the poster and then you can ask if there's yeah. you know something more specific you want to talk actually, about actually the vlogs has been quite good to sort of as a good introduction to start chatting to people as well so mm-hmm. you may have seen uh, on our youtube channel we published a, a, a nice vlog about our experiences at bpsc in oxford so do check that out if you've not seen it. Yes, yeah. So that's the video of John and Tom and their yeah. escapades in Oxford. Yeah. It was really good fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a good meeting. So it's only the second time uh, this has happened. Because, yeah. I mean, planetary science in its broad definition yeah. encompasses atmospheres, mm. remote sensing, all the sort of geochemistry, petrology mm. and volcanology and stuff. It's, so it's, it's a very kind of vague it umbrella is, terminology for yeah, a, a broad yeah. And so, yeah. of things. So this, this, this meeting originated as a meteorite one day uk meteorite scientist meetup when it was the 50th anniversary of a meteorite called barwell mm. um impacting in leicestershire i think it was um so it was held in the nhm and then a year after that we can decided to continue it as a day-long uk meetup and it was in manchester after that and then glasgow took it on and they decided they wanted to expand it into this everybody else to mm-hmm. try and get the whole planetary science community together for mm. a slightly larger conference and i don't know like it's it's interesting chatting to a lot of people about what the value of this is because the problem is is that a lot of people didn't go to the atmospheric mm. talks and a lot of them didn't come to our sample based talks and so it is difficult to try and get these different communities to talk to each other i mean i don't know if you found that was the case for bmsg as well marissa um i mean yeah vmsg was quite broad but i feel because it's a very well established conference it's a bit more of a tight knit community yeah. so a lot of people already kind of know each other so want to hear about what yeah. other groups are doing still mm. yeah i guess you need those foundations you do earlier on because i i thought it was really interesting to see the range of planetary science that's done in the uk yeah i mean and it, i guess that's the point of the meeting isn't it mm, is yeah. is actually just show this off i yeah. mean i think we we are in this research group we have quite a focus on sample yes. science obviously and you because for, we're but you in a forget that there's department. all sorts of other stuff going i forget all the time that the atmosphere yeah. is a thing the atmosphere <laughs> yeah i know it's difficult when you're breathing it's it all the time to take it for granted isn't yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah. um no it's good and then some of the talks we heard on some of the mission updates were really interesting hearing about some of the new uh, proposed missions that people want to do to Venus and some of the stuff in Titan. Mm. Well, and it's also really interesting to see the kind of progress reports from yeah. the things that are being put together from the kind of, you know, you see about these things in media articles mm-hmm. when they talk about the kind of broad idea of what the the thing the, the mission is going to do. Um, but it's cool to see like the first images from whatever mm-hmm. camera or and the process of putting all of that together, which you otherwise just would, would never see. Mm-hmm. So that was really interesting as well. Yeah. Um, and we had another good good showing from Manchester. We yeah, had... it was pretty much a Manchester session, in fact, it wasn't it? A whole afternoon dedicated yeah. to people presenting sample science, which I was also showing that session too, just with yeah. the cherry um, on the cake yeah there. so tom you gave your first conference talk I as did. well yes, so, yes. Uh, and how, how was it that? yeah you were quite nervous weren't you i was quite nervous yeah yeah so um my my watch records my heart rate okay uh, because it's 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 like a a little smart watch smart like watch. that and yeah. um <clears throat> it suggested that for the duration of my talk i'd actually been doing uh, intense elliptical exercise <laughs> because there had been such a sharp peak yeah. in my heart rate for that 15 minutes specifically <laughs> that uh you carried it off though you didn't look nervous at all well that's good that's mm. good i think i i think i sort of find with with public speaking in general that i get nervous beforehand yes. but once i'm kind of once there, you're in it, the it's like, well i'm here in. now so i may as well just talk Enjoy about it. the thing that i'm here to talk about yeah, rather yeah. than waste time yeah. being nervous and yeah i think it was pretty well received people mm-hmm. said they liked it yeah, and they applauded so that's one yeah, thing well, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. there were no there were just a quiet few quiet boos from the back um yeah yeah that's yeah, good yeah. Do you do you know, think... my, my very first conference talk i ever gave was at vmsg this vmsg as well mm-hmm. and i had of course quite a negative experience actually because i was talking about some icelandic stuff mm-hmm. And I was going through like the various line. I can't remember what I was talking about now, but I was had some geochemistry plots on there. And there was somebody in the first few rows um, of the lecture theatre with just his like face in his palms, just shaking his head. Oh, no. And it was like, okay, that's uh, 
That's great. I'll just carry on then. But <laughs> did, did they say anything afterwards? Or? No, I didn't ask a question or anything. Yeah, so no. Maybe oh. it was just a personal yeah. crisis. I, yeah. I, but I knew who they were. I'm not going to name names. I knew who they were, and I knew that they disagreed with some of the things okay. that I was suggesting. Right, but right, still, right, I mean, right. it wasn't exactly what you want to see, and it's, I was very nervous at the time. Were, were you like a first or second year PhD student? I was a first student? year PhD student. Right. Oh, right. okay. See, in, in, in contrast to Marissa, I much prefer talking to people that I already know yeah uh, about about the science partly i think because i sort of know what their what know. unimpressed <laughs> face looks like <laughs> and what their oh that's kind of interesting face looks like which means it's easy to gauge whether or not i've kind of mm-hmm. lost the plot a bit um yeah. and so Especially i was kind of in academia there's kind of like a limited amount of facial expressions yeah it's true people, yeah. a lot of people do like squint don't they yeah. but just because there's a, a concentration face can yeah. look quite intense but yeah. in reality it's not that they disapprove yeah, so they're just trying yeah. to concentrate really yeah. hard kind of yeah. stood at the front looking in the crowd from mm-hmm. person to person yeah. that i knew just in a circuit so that i didn't spend the entire time looking at the computer yeah but, but no, in, uh, overall yeah. it was it was fun it was That's fun good. and yeah. i actually i think especially with enough stuff mm. to talk about mm-hmm. and feeling mm. like there were some preliminary results and things that yeah. i could pull out it, it wasn't too bad once but I got also doing. giving talks is by by far the best way to get mm-hmm. your face and mm. name out there. Absolutely. I've, I've always had a, such a better response from mm-hmm. work I'm presenting after giving a talk yeah. versus giving a poster. Just so people I just managed to, to sail through more. my PhD without doing any posters whatsoever. I've never done a poster ah. at a conference. Always just talk. There is value in yeah. doing a poster. I think the, I the dream is, is yeah. doing um, a talk and, and a, poster a poster on the same day. So this yeah, happened yeah, to yeah. me once at AGU a few years ago where I gave a talk in the morning and then it, well, I stood at the poster, people then came up to me and mm-hmm. asked me questions about the talk yes, yeah, and that was quite is, a good vehicle. Yeah. Well, this is sort of what I had at BPSC. Yeah, I, I gave my that, talk yeah, on Monday yeah. ev- uh, yeah. afternoon, evening, technically by that yeah. point. And then um, I had a poster on the Wednesday morning, yeah. which was pretty cool because mm-hmm. yeah. it was kind of split. Some people came to see the poster and some people came to yeah. talk about some but, of the um, things I've been talking yeah. about in the talk. But it is, is useful because the, they know you're going to be there. Yeah, yeah exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. No, it was a good meeting. The only thing I'd say is that the poster sessions were just in between the coffee breaks. Mm. Normally at conferences, they a, tend to be in the evenings and they're there for a couple of hours. Yeah, like but, a dedicated, exactly. dedicated time but slot. But for this, I think yeah. they were just trying to like squeeze as many talks as possible. Well, I think there, there was there was a... So there were an emphasis on PhD talks as well, though. Like they said in their kind of call for abstracts at the start that there would be an emphasis on mm-hmm, giving yeah. early career people talks. Yeah, which is and a I very think good thing. Having think. more time yeah. for those was probably mm-hmm. a benefit. But you're right. Yeah. It did mean the poster sessions it felt did. a bit. Yeah, it did. I mean, but I, I don't really know how you'd get around that. I mean, I, I suggested in the past you could do parallel sessions. Mm. But then people have pointed out that then that would just exacerbate the problem that no one would go to each other communities. Mm talks yeah. so mm. i don't know it's a difficult one to balance i guess i think uh, for vmsg they had slightly shorter coffee breaks but mm-hmm. then the talks finished earlier so sort of from half four onwards it was right two hours mm. purely of posters mm. which was quite good it meant you could yeah. actually get around them mm. yeah and does vmsg have a like a nice little reception dinner afterwards oh yeah yeah there was the conference dinner yeah. um the night before my talk mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah i don't know if you guys get this but when you go around posters yeah right, and you get stuck next to the poster you want to see. Yeah. Because there's a crowd of people around it. Yeah. So you get stuck talking to the person next to the poster you want to see. Uh, no, and I for just me, blank- it can just be something completely irrelevant. I just blank them if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> do you just get your phone out or do you look into her eyes yeah, yeah, and, and just, just not say respond. anything? Yeah. No, I don't do that, obviously. I'm being flippant. But um, yeah, high demand posters can be quite challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the importance of a good poster, though, really, is that they should stand up mm-hmm. without somebody there to explain it mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So obviously one of the benefits of going to conferences is you get to hear the new science that is being done. So is there anything cool and new that you guys heard at these conferences? Uh, so I actually really liked Sarah Russell's talk. So she from the Natural uh, History Natural Museum. Museum yeah. yeah. So she was talking about um, a joint NASA and JAXA, which is the Japanese mm-hmm. Exploration Agency, uh, a joint mission between those two uh, that there's, I think is sort of on the table for the next five to mm-hmm. 10 years mm-hmm. uh, to collect a sample from one of Mars's moons, Ooh. which would be really cool because I don't think we really know much about them. Yes, we don't. So for the audience, Mars has two very small moons, um deimos and phobos yes and uh, i mean i should know that yeah uh but so we we don't very really know very much about them they seem to be similar to asteroids in their composition yes well there are two models aren't there yeah 
as to how they acquired the moons. Capture is yeah. in their chondrites, yeah. or they're related to impact. Yes, so but the issue with the impact one is that they do not seem to be similar in composition to the surface of Mars. So that's where it kind of falls down. But we don't really know yeah. until we get a sample from them what they're really exactly. made of. Yeah. So yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was a really interesting talk. Um, so one of my highlights for me was uh, seeing Richard Gale talk about Venus again. I've seen this talk a few times before, actually, yeah. but it's always really cool. So most of the information we have about uh, Venus comes mm -hmm. from radar studies that were done yep. in the like seventies or eighties mm -hmm. or whatever decades old, I guess. And he's got some new ideas about how to interpret these radar. And he, he's got these hypothesis that you've got these areas of Venus that may be jiggling around. So, sort of some sort of pseudo tectonic model. Mm -hmm. His analogy is. So you're like talking about crustal pack. things that are moving yeah. around. Yeah. Crustal yeah. blocks. Crustal yeah, blocks yeah, yeah. that are jiggling yeah. around like an ice pack, basically. Yeah, rather so than like. It's like a halfway house between our tectonics and Mars's lack of tectonics. I Obviously, guess. it's not your talk, so you might not know the in depth, but what was he basing those? ideas are it was off the way in which you can interpret the radar data basically okay, yeah. i think he was arguing that a lot of the way the radar data was historically in interpreted is not quite right and he i think he's been looking at radar data on earth yeah. looking at like fault zones and rift mm -hmm. zones and how that looks in radar and then yeah, comparing well, it to what's, yeah. what it's like on venus to yeah. make these inferences mm -hmm. but uh, it's an interesting idea i think it's quite cool to sort mm -hmm. of suggest mm -hmm. that Ma uh, venus sorry has this sort of pseudo tectonism mm -hmm. going on but it just it, it, all this just really highlights yeah. why we need more information yeah. and more data because we don't <sighs> really know the proper compositions mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. a lot of the lithologies on venus and we don't we all our data set are decades old so mm -hmm. there's not like there are probes flying around there now so yeah. we can actually monitor whether there is movement or activity mm. or whatever it would make it so much easier for us to know if venus had a magnetic field because obviously on earth when when you get plates moving away from one another you actually get basically lines of mag magnetism yeah so if we had a probe that could go around and look at the magnetic fields of venus it'd be able to detect those things but obviously it doesn't have one so so you can't really get a map of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting and difficult problem to solve, really, especially mm -hmm. with a, problem, a planet that's just covered in atmosphere so you can't yeah. see the surface. And it's also a lot more challenging to get to as well because yeah. of the orbital dynamics of sending spacecraft to the inner solar system. It's much harder to do than to send yeah. it uh, outwards to Mars mm -hmm. as well, which doesn't help. Yeah. At the other end of the solar system, there was a really good talk by Karen Aplin at Bristol mm -hmm. who talked about using um, lightning to mm. infer the composition of atmospheres on the icy um, giant mm. planets, um, which was just fascinating because obviously that was that was in the atmospheric session, so it was a lot of context that I'd never seen before, mm -hmm. which is code for didn't understand. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they were essentially using the absorption spectra of was the, it? Of the lightning, lightning, the fact which they were, they have images of. Mm -hmm. To, to make inferences about I what... I can't remember now. Was this present? based on ground-based observations? Can they detect I can't something? remember now. But that, way, that's it was cool. just completely yeah. outside of the realm of yeah. imagination for mm -hmm. most of the science that yeah. I've ever really come into I mean, imagining with. what a lightning storm on somewhere like Neptune or Uranus must look like. <laughs> uh, so, Ricky, while we've been in Plymouth and in Oxford for our conferences, uh, I believe you've been somewhere as well. I have. So, for the listeners, and I don't want to jinx it, but I don't believe in any of that superstitious stuff anyway... Uh, I went for a job interview in the Netherlands for the European Space Agency. Ooh. This was a postdoctoral fellowship. This is a postdoctoral fellowship. So what that means is essentially is I sent off a project idea. They liked the project idea. Then I had to do an online interview, which was very bizarre. Um, like Skype or? So it was like a Skype interview, but there was no one on the other side. You just had to read text. It gave you a certain amount of time to read the text. You read the question and then you'd have to respond to the question. That ah, sounds quite so, off-putting. Yeah, so a, a video camp. interview where well, you like record kind yourself. Of like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they, they, they could see you. No, it wasn't live. Right. So that would be way more ominous. Yeah. <laughs> they could yeah. just see you on the other side. Yeah, but the, thankfully... These are just video interviews. Have you not heard of these before? No. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. It's the first time I've ever had to do one. Yeah. Huh. It's not It's not a normal thing. It's quite an anomaly for postdoctoral fellowships to do it. Oh, okay. Um, but it basically, it's a screening to see whether you're a crazy person or not, mm. is essentially what it is. Yeah, and, and to also just to see if you're a nice person. Yeah. Um, but despite so, that, they still invited you for yes, a... Yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, because I'm a very good actor. Yeah. 
I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you guys all thought Arnold Schwarzenegger was in the room for a moment, but I'm just a very good actor. See, in there I was acting sincerity, but I'm not being sincere. So anyway, I got through the first part. Congratulations. And then I got through the second part. Ooh. And then I got an inter- interview, asked to come to for an actual interview. So that's pretty good. How many other people get down to that? So there was eight of us there all together. Um, so the day split into this. I flew out on the Monday mm-hmm. and then I have a 15 minute talk, five minutes of questions and then an, and then an interview after that. Mm-hmm. And the talk we had to do in front of all the other applicants. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's a, everyone. Yeah, I don't like that. Do. I find that yeah. very off-putting. It, it, I kind of just had to think about it in a way of going, these guys are really good. Otherwise they wouldn't be here. So I must be equally as good. Let's just give it a go. You know, best, best man or woman or person wins. So gave my talk, went really well. I got a lot of questions that none of them were like, this is a terrible idea. They Why were all just yeah. like, well, yeah, that sounds great. And it was a very, uh, it was a difficult thing because they wanted us to cover background information on the topic because mm. not everyone's a Martian scientist. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, they're not all from Mars and Borderland and then came back down to Earth to do science. Um, not everyone... Uh, no, sorry. So they also wanted us to talk about my PhD. Mm-hmm. And then they also wanted us to talk about what the fellowship was going to be about mm-hmm. in 15 minutes. There's a lot to cover. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it went pretty well. And then we had the interview afterwards, which was an hour long as well. Yeah. And I think that went okay as well. Um, they were all very accommodating, very nice. Yeah. The interviewers didn't seem to try and intimidate you or anything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and there was five of them. They were interviewed yeah. in front of a panel of five people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to get the job. So yeah. if I mean, it's very prestigious. Yeah. You know. And this would be for two years? Two years with the possibility mm. of a third. Yeah. And it's a lovely campus, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's I seem to nice remember they do place. lovely lunches there. Y- yeah, they were okay. Yeah. I had lentils and rice. Yeah. It's quite rice. cheap as well, isn't it? Because it's all subsidized, I think. Yeah, it was okay. The important yeah. parts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, my, the lunch was just before my interview. So it wasn't something I was particularly no. focusing on okay. in my mind. Yeah. But, anyway, uh, do you know sort of when you'll find out? Yeah, so uh, I assume the way it's working is they have a, a funding body at ESA and then they have different places. So they have, a, they have one at ESA, which is actually in Spain. They have one in STEC, which is in uh, um, the Netherlands. Netherlands, yeah. And then they have one in America as well. So the money must be split between those three areas. Yeah. So it's going to be about a month because they still have to interview people at those other two yeah, institutes yeah. as well. And they didn't even tell us how many jobs we'll be going either, yeah. so we'll just see well, what happens. Well, I mean, you know, regardless, just getting through to that interview mm-hmm. process is still quite an achievement. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah, it sounds cheesy, but it's a good experience for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. At the very so least, you know, happens. all these people know who you are now. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, good. it's been a busy month then, hasn't Has it? Indeed. Has indeed. So, I know we've all been doing travelling, but I guess the people who've done the most travelling are those in Antarctica. Well, yes. So, the Antarctic Meteorites team have been down in Antarctica for two months, yep. roughly now. Yep. You know, since just after we, we spoke to Roma back in December. Yep. Um, they are all on their way back now, and they've had a, a complete field season with lots of meteorites mm-hmm. collected. And, yep. and hopefully was, well... Maybe not quite as soon as they're back. We'll give them time to, you know, yep, in the next the few months, um, we'll get, we'll get a chance those, to talk uh, to them. And absolutely, I thought we'd go in more of a paparazzi type fashion. Once the plane <laughs> plane lands, we would mm. run up to them yeah. with the recording equipment. Yeah, so you can expect that in the next vlog. <laughs> uh, so it'll be great to talk to Katie and Roma when they're back properly mm-hmm. um, here in Manchester. And yeah, I think we have a lot of other exciting video ideas, yeah. video and podcast ideas for the next few months. Um, Remember, everyone, please keep commenting, subscribe, share this with your friends. Uh, if you comment a good question, we'll have another one of the Q&A sessions at some point, yeah. so we'll answer those questions. And don't worry, we're back at it again now, so you'll have our episodes each week again. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Yeah. Um, thank you for listening, uh, and we hope you, hope you enjoyed. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. I was listening to you.